Hey guys, it's Shelby, otherwise known as Shelbizzle here on YouTube. And I know what you're thinking. One of three things. One, damn Shelby, it took you a long ass time to get the next installment of this series up. Two, wow, your lighting looks so much better than it ever has before. Or three, just kidding, I don't know what three was. Anyway, I'm really sorry. I feel like I've started the last two videos of this series like this, but... It is what it is. I'm sure you guys can relate. I've been out of town a lot for the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and I film pr primarily on the weekends. Um, and I have a full-time job like I've mentioned before, so I, I don't have that much time to film. I did get this ring light for Christmas. That's why we look decent today. Um, which allows me to record things a lot easier um, now, so I don't have to have natural daylight to do it. I can record like at night like I'm doing right now, which is such a huge relief. Not that any of you guys probably care about this. Actually, I think the people who watch these videos, specifically like my relationship videos, probably are like genuinely interested in my life and like who I am and what I've been through and how I got here. So, a few reasons why this was late. First of all, because, yeah, the holidays. Second of all, because, um, lighting. And third of all, because I fucking... <sighs> if you guys saw my dumpster dive where I, uh, did, like, the, um, gifts I gave from a dumpster, I recorded the next, this, the video you're about to see right now, I recorded it that same day when I did that, and, um, my nose contour was not blended, and I got so many freaking comments in, uh, that video about my fucking nose contour that I was like, if I upload this story that means so much to me and people comment about my fucking nose contour the whole time, it's gonna hurt my feelings because, like, this is something that's very traumatic that happened to me and, like, I'm so proud of myself for being able to get out of it that if people, like, were only focusing on my fucking nose contour and not, like, you know, what I was talking about, then I was just, I, I didn't want to fucking deal with it and so... Yeah, the internet is what it is. Like, <laughs> I understood that that's probably what would happen, so I just decided to postpone it until now. So if you haven't seen the other videos in this series, this series is about a boyfriend I had from the time I was in fifth grade till my junior year in high school. And he was very abusive, uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, all of the above. There are three other videos leading up to this one, so if this is the first one you're seeing, you should go watch the other ones first. This video will be here when you get back. And um, I'm just gonna go ahead and get into it. So you've heard the story of how it started, you've heard the story of how he stabbed me, punched me, and now you're gonna hear the story of how he left me for someone who I considered to be my sister. So, as I've said, um, this relationship lasted until my junior year in college, college, high school, Jesus, thank God I got out of this in high school and not college. The boyfriend's name is Lucifer. So, there was this girl, um, she, her name for the purposes of this video will be Izzy. So, Izzy lived with us from the time, I would say from the time that she was in 6th grade up until she was in ninth grade. I would guess. I'm, I honestly don't know the exact numbers, but I know this girl was my sister's best friend, okay? Her name is Izzy for this video. And her parents didn't give a shit about her, which is honestly still to this day so sad to me that um, someone who was raising a kid would like not look after them at all and like not care about what's happening to them at all. Um, literally from the time, I, I, I think sixth grade, the girl came to our house and she barely ever left. I mean, like, she would stay there every day of the week, every day of the weekend. Like, she never went home. Her mom would come over to, like, bring her clothes and money sometimes, but, like, that was the extent of, like, her relationship with her parents. So naturally, I mean, I spend a lot of time with this girl. I mean, me and my sister are only two years apart. Um, that's how old Izzy is too. So I was, I was pretty close to them. Like, um, my life at home, I was always hanging out with them, always spending time with them and stuff like that. You know, time goes by and me and Lucifer were off and on, off and on all the time. As I've mentioned before, he would break up with me all the time and what I assume now uh, because of some things that happened and some, you know, whatever. I think he was sleeping with other girls during the times that he was not with me. Uh, when he would break up with me and stuff like that. So, so one of these times he broke up with me and I started noticing that he and Iz Izzy would um, talk sometimes. Like we would break up and get back together literally on a daily basis. So it was like I would notice that their interactions were changing. Like whenever me and my sister, him and Izzy were together like at school or something, um, their interactions were different. Not necessarily like flirting. But, like, they, I don't know if you know what I mean. Like, you know when you know when two people know each other and they're, like, interacting and you can tell? That's what it was like. And that was my first flag of being, like, that's weird. And so, 
Izzy started going home more. Um, started going home to her house where her parents live more often. Which is weird because, like I just told you, she literally had lived with us for about three years at this point. Now, the bad part about this is that my boyfriend lived in the same neighborhood as Izzy. And so I would be talking to him on the phone and he'd be like, oh, I'm going to go hang out with my friends. And he'd be like, oh, Izzy's here. And I'd be like, oh, that's weird. Izzy's like hanging out with you? Um, and I just started picking up on the fact that they were hanging out a lot. So then, like I said, Lucifer breaking up with me and getting back together with me all the time. Sorry. <laughs> and then when Izzy would come over, sorry you guys, I have to keep, um, like restarting this because I keep calling the girl by her real name instead of Izzy. Anyway, when Izzy would come back over to our house because she wasn't like staying at her house all the time, she would just go home sometimes. When Izzy would come back to our house, I would notice that she was always texting someone. And the person she was texting was named Taylor, which I knew a Taylor because they rode our bus. Like, I knew this person. It was a girl, okay? So then one day we go and take a family beach trip. It was like my mom, my dad, me, my sister, and Izzy. So I noticed that all day Izzy is going to the car to text this person named Taylor, who I assume was a female. Um, which I thought was weird. Like, why are you always having to text this girl who's just your friend, right? Like, that's a little weird. So, I don't know. Things led up to this. Like, him hanging out with her. Um, me noticing that they had different interactions now whenever, like, I was around even. And stuff like that. So, I, for whatever reason, had this hunch that she was not texting someone named Taylor. I looked at her phone and it said she was texting someone named Taylor. So, I was like... That's just weird. And then I like started to read the messages. So I'm reading through these messages and they're like, oh, I miss you so much. When am I going to get to see you again? What are you like? What are you doing? Like, is Shel does Shelby know that we've been talking? Like, whatever. And at this point, me and Lucifer are still dating. Like, I'm pretty sure in this moment when I read this message, Lucifer and I were dating. So I, for whatever reason, decided to look at the number behind the name Taylor. And of course, it was Lucifer's number. So once I realized this, I didn't know what to do. Like, what, what can you do? Like, she's at the beach with my family. Like, she obviously has to travel back with us. I didn't know if I should tell my sister, if I should confront her, if I should tell my parents. Like, I didn't know what to do. So I basically didn't do anything at that point. Um, I ended up telling my sister like a day later and she was so angry. She was not allowed at our house anymore from that point on. And the way it came out is I kind of talked to Lucifer about it. I was like, dude, I know you're texting Izzy. Like, why... Why are you doing this? That's so weird. And basically once I started to stand up for myself and let him know that like I knew he was taking advantage of me with Izzy, he didn't like that. He didn't like being accused of things like I was always being accused of things by him. He didn't like being told that he was wrong. He didn't like being caught. He didn't like any of that stuff. And he started saying the worst things to me like how Izzy is better than me in bed and she's much prettier than me and blah 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 blah. Um, I know he also told me a huge factor in dating her was that her parents didn't control her like my parents you know they, they let me do a lot. Honestly my parents didn't pay nearly as much attention to me as I think they should have but obviously her parents paid even less attention to her. So he was like you know she can do things whenever I want like she'll give me whatever I want and whatever. Um, that was after I had been dating this guy for what, four, five years? After I had been manipulated and hurt and lied to and cheated on and, you know, just put down, I guess is the word, in so many ways for him to just blatantly be like, yeah, so I'm dating this girl that's like literally your sister that you've been living with for the last two years, for the last three, two, three years. Yeah, I am. It wasn't a big deal to him, and unfortunately, um, being the insecure little piece of shit that I was, uh, he eventually started telling me, like, oh, I'm so sorry, I made a huge mistake, and she did the same thing. She was like, oh, it's not what you think. Sorry if the angle changed all, my camera died. Um, anyway, I was just gonna say, it's really sad looking back now that, honestly, after I found out that they both <sighs> had done that to me, after I found out that he had cheated on me and that she had betrayed me the way she did, I remember that there was a point where I forgave both of them and I remained friends with her to a certain extent. Certainly nowhere near where we were and she was still never allowed in my house. I, I wasn't like her best friend but I wasn't like an evil person to her. It's not bad to not hold grudges. It's, I think it's a good thing to not hold grudges against people. The thing is, is that I didn't realize my value. I didn't realize that what they had done to me was so disrespectful and I was so much better than that. Um, and I don't, I don't mean like, you guys know I hate trying to like put 
yourself above other people or you know ranking people in terms of like how much they're valued in life but like everyone honestly everyone who is a decent human being and is respectful to other people deserves respect themselves and that's where I was I was a good girlfriend I was a good friend I was a good person I was a good everything you know I was young and I never did anything wrong to either of these people and I didn't deserve what happened to me but I didn't realize that back then and not that I directly victim shamed not that I directly victimized and blamed myself um, but I did not understand that I did not deserve that and what they were doing was so wrong that they didn't deserve to be in my life I let him back into my life for a period of time which only gave me a lot of problems that I have today in terms of control issues, in terms of anxiety, in terms of depression, and in terms of my self-worth. Um, I'm sure you guys, you know, have noticed I I take, I have a lot of pride in myself. I wouldn't be able to be on YouTube and put up with all the hate if I didn't, which just shows honestly how far I've come since that point. And this is just another way that I've proven to myself that I didn't deserve to be treated that way and I'm better than that. And I want to get that message out there to any girls who don't understand that. You guys, no one who is worth your time is going to cheat on you. This is like more towards my younger viewers. And I need you guys to know that if someone doesn't value you, in a way that you deserve, they're not worth your time. Please, God, please don't waste your time on someone um, that doesn't deserve you. You know, for the longest time he made me think that I wasn't deserving of love, I wasn't pretty enough or skinny enough or I guess good at sex enough who to deserve someone treating me right, but that is not true and you can't let someone tell you that it is true and if you think it's true about yourself you need to figure out a way to change that because it's not true you know you you can change anything you don't like about yourself anything you don't like about your situation and yes sometimes it's significantly harder for some people um, more so than others but I need you to know that whatever situation you're in right now you can change it you just have to take the initiative and you have to be consistent and persistent the number one thing in your life that should be a priority for you is your happiness no one else's happiness, yours. And sit down and think about what happiness really is. Is happiness really you working so hard to make someone else happy so that you can be with them? Does that really bring you more happiness than like stress and sadness and anxiety? Because what I found is that I thought it did. I thought that working so hard to be a good girlfriend and to prove myself to him for that moment where he would tell me like, yeah, you did good. Or for that moment where he would tell me I love you so much, like it was all worth it. But looking back, I wasted so much of my life on someone who was never going to give me the fulfillment I needed because it was within myself that I needed to find value and he was never going to give me that. So I want you girls to understand that. And it's so true when people tell you, you have to fix yourself first before you get in a relationship. Because if you don't love yourself, you will take that love wherever you can get it. And that's how you get yourself into a bad situation. And it doesn't matter if you're 10 or 20 or 30 or 40, that applies to you. And I need you to know that. I need you to know that you are valued. I need you to know that you are worthy of happiness. And you are worthy of never letting anybody control you the way that I let someone control me for so long. Please learn from my mistakes. That's why I'm here telling this story today. There's honestly so much more to this story, but I think that that's where I'm going to end it for today. Um, I think next week I'm going to talk... I don't want to say next week. Next time um, I upload one of these videos, I'm going to talk about how it impacted my, rela my first relationship following this one. Um, and how it even carried into my current relationship today. I don't know if I'll do those in the same one. Um, probably just my first relationship after that one and how it impacted that one, you know? But let me know if you guys have any questions about the situation. Um, I will be answering comments below. Uh, absolutely, all of your comments. If you have a question, I will answer them for sure, no doubt. I guess that's it for today, you guys. I encourage you to email me if you have any questions, concerns, if you're dealing with anything that you think I could help you with. Um, I've gotten so many emails from so many of you guys and I've been able to help out quite a few of you. Um, a lot of you guys have told me I've helped you through some really tough times and that is so touching to me. I would love to be of help to any of you guys. You guys mean so much to me. You have no idea. So that's it you guys. Um, until next time, create the peace.